International Day of the Girl and welcome to Festival of the Girl. I'm Onita Dutta and I have a secret superpower. I can make lots of noise without making any noise at all. How, you ask? Well, it's kind of like magic, except you don't have to be a wizard to do it. All you need are these and sometimes this. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not a magic wand. It's a baton. And I'm a conductor. So, what do conductors do? A conductor is the musician who facilitates large groups of other musicians playing together, like an orchestra or a choir, or sometimes both at the same time. Conductors are needed for two main reasons, one scientific and one musical. The scientific reason is that sound actually travels quite slowly through space. It takes a long time for a sound that happens in one place to get to another. Because we see through light, and light travels really quickly, when something happens far away and we can see it, we see it almost instantly. However, sound travels about a million times slower than light. This causes a big problem for instrumentalists and musicians who are spread out across a large space, like a stage or in a building like a theatre. Let's have a look at this picture of an orchestra. If these guys make a sound, by the time these guys hear it and play what they think is at the same time, they'll be too late. However, we can fix this with a conductor, somebody who all the musicians can see, who can show the beat and the time of the music visually so that everybody can play together. I also said that there's a musical reason why we need a conductor. That's because there's often far more than just one way to play a piece of music. Listen to these two short clips of the opening bars of Mozart's opera, The Magic Flute, directed by two different conductors. As you listen, think what words you might use to describe them. Are they warm, spiky, soft, grand, hard? You decide. to interpret the ideas written down by a composer and a lot of it comes down to personal taste and individual thinking. Musicians tend to have pretty strong opinions about music so whenever there's more than a few of them in one space there has to be a system for deciding how the music is going to be given shape, colour and exactly what speed it's going to be played at. When you're the conductor it's your job to make those decisions and to communicate them by showing it with your body. And that is what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. First things first. When we speak, we need to speak clearly in order to be understood. In the same way, because conductors communicate with their bodies, they need to have a clear body posture in order to be able to communicate what they want to effectively. An open, upright and relaxed body posture is generally a good thing in life anyway. It makes it easier for people around you to receive any information you're trying to communicate and to attend to what you're saying to them. Let's see what happens when I invite my instrumentalists to play and raise their instruments and get ready with a closed, slouched body posture. Now look what 
happens when I stand up straight, hold my shoulders down and proud, open my body out to them and smile. musicians, even professionals, often get a little bit nervous before they start to play in a big concert. Seeing somebody who's confident and smiling and encouraging in front of them will help them to do their best and it will help you as a leader too. Let's try. Find the largest mirror you can in your house and go stand in front of it as you stand normally. Notice, are you standing tall or are you hunched over a little bit? Are your shoulders curved in? Or are they out and proud, down away from the ears? Is your neck bent or leaning forwards? Can you imagine that there's a string coming through the top of your head, like a puppet, reaching up through the ceiling? And what about your arms and elbows? Are they in close to the sides or across the front of your body? Can you take your elbows out away from the sides and open the palms to the front? Excellent. Now you're standing like a leader. Now that you've found a good body posture, I want you to relax, by which I don't mean I want you to slump. Keep that relaxed, open body posture and go for a walk around your house. Keep imagining that there's a string coming out through the top of your head. Keep your shoulders wide and keep a nice, gentle smile on your face. See how it feels, pause the video and I'll wait here for you. How did that feel? Did you feel more confident? You look confident. Great. Now, raise your arms as if you're picking up something big or showing someone how long a plank of wood is. That's how we invite singers to sing and invite the orchestra to pick up their instruments and get ready to play. Imagine that there's a huge orchestra in front of you. Stand up tall, give them a smile, they're nervous, remember, and now ask them to pick up their instruments. Amazing, great job. So, now that you've mastered the whole standing like a leader thing, I've got a bit of a problem for you. Do you remember when I said that conductors make noise without making any noise at all, that we show sounds with our bodies. Well, that's great, but what do sounds look like? You can't see sounds, right? Hmm. Well, I've got some examples for you. I made some shapes with my body, and I sent them to some musician friends who are used to following conductors. I didn't tell them anything about what kinds of sounds I was imagining when I made those shapes with my body. And this is what happened. Have a look. It's your turn. Let's explore what sounds we can make, focusing on your hands. First of all, how are you standing? Still standing tall with a good, open, relaxed posture? Great. First of all, and there's no right answer here, so do it your way, can you show me a loud sound? <laughs> Fantastic. What about a spiky sound? Hmm. I think we need to make it more difficult. What about a warm sound? A sad sound?
Hmm. How about a spooky sound? <laughs> Amazing. Great job. Okay, so now you can show lots of different kinds of sounds and the qualities of them. But music is a continuous flow of sounds and the conductor's job is to show that continuous flow and show the order of it. It's often said that a conductor's most important job is keeping time. Do you remember back at the beginning when we were talking about how difficult it is for orchestral musicians or musicians spread across a large space to play in time with each other? Well, we're going to learn a little bit about how to manage that now. I think it's important to say that, despite the way we often speak about it, conductors don't really keep time so much as show time, or maybe they show the relationship of the music and the speed of the music to time. A conductor's a bit like a fancy clock, you know? They don't just show you the hour and the minute and the seconds passing, but they also like predict the weather and have a stopwatch function and look fancy. Yeah, where was I? In music, the speed or tempo of the music in relation to time is defined by how fast or slow the beat is. The beat, or the pulse as it's sometimes called, is what we pick up on when we clap along or tap our feet to a piece of music, which is something that more or less everyone can do and does automatically to express enjoyment at something that we like. To get us started, can you practice clapping along to this piece of music that I'll play for you right now? this one. Did you notice that you clapped faster during the first piece? A conductor doesn't clap, obviously, because that would make a noise. A conductor shows where the claps would be, where the beat is, by waving their arms. Something like this. If you have music lessons, you might know about time signatures, which is we, where we group the beats, those things that we clap along to, into groups of two, three, four, or other numbers. Conductors actually use different patterns of movement for these different groupings of the beats. We're just going to focus on the most simple of the beat patterns, which is when the music falls nicely into groups of two. It goes something like this. Of the groups of two, when there's a beat that feels stronger to us, we bring our arm down like this. And on the beat of the bar that feels less forceful to us, we bring our arm up like this. Have a go with me. Let's start at the top and think about the journey as you bring your hand down and around at the bottom and back up again and down and up and down and up and down. Good, you've got the hang of that. Can you do it a bit faster? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Great. Now, one final thing. We need to bring back our different kinds of sounds and combine that with showing time. How would this beat pattern look? if we were conducting a smooth piece of music. Experiment. Have a go with a few things while you listen to this piece of music. Now try it 
it with this one. It's kind of bouncy. <laughs> So now you can show the beat or pulse of a piece of music and you can also show the quality of the sound at different speeds. There's one last thing that we need to be able to show to our musicians and that's the dynamics, the volume, how loud or how quietly we want them to play. I'm oversimplifying things a little bit here but in general if you make a big shape people will make a loud sound and if you make a small shape as long as you're not crunching over your body posture, people will make a quieter one. Can you show me your two beat pattern with a really, really loud sound? Amazing. What about a quiet one? Remember, keep your body posture nice and proud, even though you're making a small gesture. you're ready to conduct a performance. I've thrown lots of new information at you today. and You've done really well if you've managed to keep up even with parts of it. We're going to finish off by trying to put everything we've learned into practice and conduct a performance. That performance for you today is going to be a piece called Hark All Ye Lovely Saints by Thomas Wilkes. It's going to be sung by some members of my lovely choir, the Swan Consort. The reason this piece is quite good for practicing all your newfound conducting skills is that it keeps a steady beat throughout. It's kind of the same speed all the way through and it has moments where it's really loud and then suddenly really quiet. So you can explore the difference between conducting a loud beat and conducting a quiet one. What you need to know before you get started is that it's also quite fast. It's 100 beats a minute, so you're going to have to wave your arms down and up a 100 times every single minute, but you'll be fine. See if you can conduct along to this piece, keeping in time and showing a difference in your beat for the times when the choir sings loudly and when they sing quietly. I'll write on the screen to give you warning when you need to change. Don't be afraid to try it a few times, rewind the video and give it a go again. Like all parts of music, conducting is about practice, so don't worry if you find it really difficult the first time. Just enjoy yourself and the lovely singing. Here we go. Hark all ye lovely saints above, Diana hath agreed with love, hath agreed with love, this fiery weapon to Well done! That's all we've got time for today, sadly. I hope that you've enjoyed your experience being a conductor. If you want to find out more, or try some other things, ask a friend who's into classical music or a music teacher to recommend some things to listen to. You can practice clapping along, or maybe even wave your arms around. Imagine what you'd do if you were conducting the piece. If you do have any questions about anything that we do in the video, please, please ask those questions below. 
I'm really looking forward to hearing what you thought about this video and what you think about conducting. If you have any questions or comments, post them below this video and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Thank you for participating in Festival of the Girl and in exploring being a conductor with me. Happy International Day of the Girl once again and enjoy the rest of the festival.